Why does it seem that God has so many rules? Have you ever wondered why God tells us not to do certain things? Find out the answer right now. Hi there, my name is Dustin Barker, and this channel is devoted to my passion, which is helping you find out who God is and who God says you are. I'm also the author of Hello, God Says My Name Is. You see, I believe there are people all across the planet that don't want to serve God because they think he's just a big joy stealer and all he does is boss us around and try to control us. So many people believe that God is a staunch, unfun dictator that tells us what to do. This couldn't be further from the truth. God is not controlling towards us at all. He is very patient, very kind, very loving, and this is actually why he gives us free will, because he doesn't want to control us. The Bible says that God has set before us life and death, blessing and cursing, and then it tells us that we get to choose. So many people have a flawed or skewed view of God in the way that they think he interacts with humankind. Many people think God does bad things to teach us or correct us. Many people think God causes bad things when we're disobedient, and this isn't true. So today, I hope to help you further understand how God deals with us as mankind. So let me start by showing you why God gives commandments and why God says do not about certain things. If God tells a child do not play with fire, why does he tell them that? Is he trying to keep them from something good? No, he's trying to keep them from being harmed. If that child decides to play with fire and gets hurt, did God do that to him? No, God warned them and he gave them a do not because he loves them and he was trying to help them avoid unnecessary problems. You must understand that every time God tells someone do not or tells us do not, he is warning us and trying to keep us from something from hurting us. You know, you may not understand it and you may not even know why he tells you no, but he is smarter than you and when we are disobedient to God's do nots, he is not out there punishing us. We are just putting ourselves in a position to be hurt. Look, God has given us a big yard to play in in this life. There are a lot of things that he says yes to. There are a lot of things that he wants us to enjoy and take pleasure in. But yes, he has put up boundaries. But those boundaries are there to keep us from getting hurt. They're not there to keep good from us because God's plans for us are good. Just look at Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They're plans of good and plans not for disaster, plans to give you a future and a hope. You see, those boundaries that God puts up are there to protect us from things that we may not see and we may not understand that could be harmful. And just like that fire will burn you, Satan wants to bring you into destruction. He wants to bring destruction into your life by causing you to step out into his territory. The thief is out there and he longs to steal and to kill and to destroy. He is constantly trying to lure you out of God's yard by saying, hey, this is harmless over here. What does God know? God is old school. Come on out here. You'll be fine. Then when something bad happens, he says, look at what God did to you. No, God brings good. God does good and he only does good. The thief does bad and he only does bad. God will give us warnings to keep us from Satan's traps that Satan has set up. So again, why does God give us rules? Or maybe a better word would be guidelines. Why does God give us guidelines? Let me explain it further like this. Why does your car come with a manual? What does the manual do? Well, that manual tells you exactly how to change a tire. It tells you how to turn, use the turn signal. It tells you how to move the seats. That car manual tells you how to operate the vehicle so that you can enjoy all the benefits that it has and so that it doesn't get destroyed. So let's pretend when you read the manual that uh, it tells you to put the gas in a certain place so you know what you do? You slam it down and you get mad because the manufacturer, you know, they're, they're telling you, they're bossy and they're controlling, they're telling you where to put the gas. How dare they tell you what to do? You know, who do they think they are? I prefer to put the gas in the back seat and that's where I'm gonna put it. You know, if you do that, you're gonna run into unnecessary problems and guess what? It wouldn't be the manufacturer's fault. You see, the manufacturer knows more about the vehicle than you do. And they aren't telling you that you have to put the gas there. They are just trying to tell you that if you want to enjoy the car, do not put the gas anywhere else. See, they give you rules and they give you guidelines for your benefit. They're trying to help you. In the same way, God has given us his written word. 
He has given us the Bible as instructions or a manual for living on the earth. He doesn't tell us things to control us. He just knows how things work. He knows how he created things and he is trying to help us enjoy them the way they are supposed to be enjoyed. He is trying to help you. So many people are running into unnecessary problems in their life and it isn't God's fault. So many people aren't doing relationships God's way. So they have heartbreak or they have relationship and marriage problems. Many people aren't doing finances God's way and then they're having unnecessary financial trouble and problems. God is not the reason for your problems. He's the solution. I want you to listen to Proverbs 19.3. People ruin their lives by their own foolishness and then they're angry at the Lord. You see, God wants to help you. He wants to lead you. But so many people don't know his voice. So many people spend no time with him to hear his direction. So many people don't listen to his voice and don't listen to his direction. Listen, God is not mad at you for your mistakes. Jesus has paid for your sin and we are made right in God's eyes, not by our works, not by our doing, but by our believing in what Jesus did for us. However, while we're here on the earth, there are blessings for obedience and there are consequences for disobedience. Please hear my heart. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. And I am not trying to single anyone out, but I just want to give you an example. So here's one example. If we smoke and we destroy our body, we can't be mad at God if we have problems in this life. Now listen, God's not mad at us if we do it, but we are opening unnecessary doors of destruction that God would try and warn us of. Now God is full of mercy and he's full of compassion and he will help us and he will heal us from any problems that we may have caused. But we must turn away from those things that are bringing destruction into our life. Let me use one last illustration. When a parent says to a child, don't get into a van with strangers. Why do they tell their child that? It's to help them. They are trying to protect them. This is what God is constantly trying to do for you. Because there is a thief out there that drives around in a van called the devil. And he is constantly trying to talk you into things that look good, but he knows they will hurt you. We do not earn our salvation. We do not become made right in God's eyes based on our works. See, it's only by the finished work of Jesus and believing on his finished work on the cross. Our obedience couldn't really earn anything in God's eyes, but our obedience gives us direction and guideline to put us at the right place at the right time. And it helps us enjoy the things that God has for us on the earth. We couldn't earn anything from God, but if we'll listen to him, he'll put us strategically at the right place at the right time. God's not mad at us when we're disobedient. He's not mad at us when we don't listen to him. He's hurt because our disobedience hurts us. And when we hurt, he hurts because he loves us deeply and he doesn't want to see us in pain. Now, if you've made mistakes, simply confess them and move on and determine to acknowledge God from now on. And while you're moving forward, acknowledge God and then just simply do what he says because he wants to lead you to the right place at the right time. So why does God sometimes seem to tell us what to do? Well, he's trying to warn us. He's trying to help us and he's trying to lead us to the right place at the right time every time.